detective quality is the maverick status. This is usually achieved by being in some way an outsider, an amateur sleuth, annoying, sorry, assisting the police in their inquiries, or being a professional DCI with an attitude problem. And the best way to be an outsider is to be working literally outside the system. Some of the best TV detectives don't have any official status at all. So who is the original bad boy outsider? Yet again, we have to delve into the casebook of Sherlock Holmes. Every TV detective has nicked stuff from Sherlock Holmes. You know, for example, um, Boyd in Waking the Dead. Speak to me! Communicate, for God's sake, in words! Boyd. He has an impatience with the world. I am not retained by the police to supply their deficiencies! It's a very different breed when you have an amateur detective that gets called in to work alongside the police or to do investigating on their own because they aren't career detectives. Would anyone think that 24 hours ago a perfectly strange young girl was found dead in our library? And now here I am with you tracking down suspects at a five-star seaside hotel. I think in this country people admire the amateur. I think they like the person who through their own interest and their own self-education and their own wits and they, they you know it's, it, they like the fact that the police are always one step behind oh no 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 what she couldn't live with was the fact that she was a murderer she killed her husband you know so you've got the private investigators, you know, your Sherlock Holmeses, your Miss Marples, who come in to, you know, muscle in sometimes, um, or are first there on the scene of a police investigation. And then you have the other set of people, uh, people like uh, Jane Tennyson, even people like uh, Fitz in Cracker, who are of the police or attached to the police, and yet have to behave almost as though they weren't. So they're always at war with, you know, a man behind a desk. So get yourself down there, matey, and give him hell. Give him hell. Yes, sir. Very often, police detectives are outlaws themselves, or mavericks themselves. And, you know, they're, they're not liked by anybody in the department, and they're always kind of slightly out on a limb all the time. And the maverick detective's okay. brushes with authority often leads to one of TV's most celebrated and overused scenarios. I'm taking you off the case. It's like the classic boss scene, isn't it? You've got the, the boss who's telling you, you must not do this, and then the renegade policeman goes off and does it anyway. In the circumstances, I am bringing in D.C.I. Hickok. Sir, you cannot replace me. Not now. Not at this stage of the what investigation. What stage? You've got nothing. That also gives you a bit of momentum for the story. You know, you, you've got to solve the case within a, a strict time period. Um, it's against the clock. It's the same mechanism that makes quiz shows work, um, but it's in a dramatic setting. And I think it's something that, that you know, gives the audience a kind of comfortable pleasure because it, it puts that distance between your hero or heroine and this rather faceless organisation that they have to be part of. No matter how good they are, we have to have someone to sort of poo on them from a great height, because we need that. We need our detectives to have something to kick against. Well, I can't cover for you. I'm declaring you unfit for duty as of now. You know, it's a great notion, the Maverick Cop, and it leads to all sorts of dramatic encounters. But in real life, I honestly, God, don't think that you can be that. You know, you certainly can come up against your superiors and you can have battles with them. Um, but, you know, it, I, th I think it's just, it is really fiction. I mean, the point is, hey, you're unorthodox. I mean, look at you. Was that the good or the bad news? We're giving Bell the job. Morse is also an outsider, but for different reasons. I don't have to convince you of anything. I think the thing people miss about the character of Morse is his vulnerability. You know that things do hurt. But he, 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 he's uh, perfectly happy to be on his own. I think he'd rather be listening to Wagner than almost anything in life. Morse, in comparison to other detectives, is very much about sort of leaps of logic. I mean, you see a lot of TV detectives, it's the maverick detective, it's the stock cliche. Uh, and Morse does have those elements to him. But with Morse, it's because he believes he's right. Uh, more than anybody else. He's not rebelling for the sake of rebelling. He's rebelling because he's, uh, you know, he believes it's the right way to approach the case. But you have evidence, Morse. 
The dieting gear, the tape, a damn confession. I have everything but the truth.